Um, could you explain what you mean for those listening about what an R&D period is? And also, I'd love to hear about what your R&D period was for Wolfenstein Youngblood as, as an example, like what you went to, how'd you get inspired for that? Yeah. So, you know, my research and development phase is where I will immerse myself in the style that I have to create. And it, it's much like an, a character actor, you know, some actors transform themselves, you know, like Tom Hanks or people like that. And it's like, wow, I can't believe. And they study, they listen, they look in the mirror, they imitate the nuances and the facial expressions of the, okay. So it's the same in music. So what I do, you know, when I listen to music, I listen very detailed and very critically and, and to every element and to every bit of the, what I'm hearing. And then I try to imitate it. I try to say, okay, what do I have in my arsenal of music and that I can do so. So, um, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I'll listen to other soundtracks if there are some. If there aren't any, I'll listen to, um, you know, I'll watch some movies or listen to, to, to groups. Uh, you know, I, I ask a lot from the client to provide me with reference music or things that they like or artists or movies or soundtracks or whatever it is. And I kind of immerse that. And then I take that all in and I put it in this pot in my head and I kind of stir it around and I sit on it for a while, you know, and I don't, I don't actively try to create. And that's one of the things that I think a lot of composers skip. They, they, they don't allow their imagination. They don't realize that stuff is going on. Even when you're not outputting notes, it gives you a chance to let it like to process it. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing what, 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 what our brains and our imaginations can come up with. If you give it the time to just like process that, and then it starts to, come up with new ideas and stuff, you know, whether I'm walking around in the shower, you're sleeping, you're night, whatever it is. But I find that when you're actively not trying to work, that's when the ideas kind of can come. Um, so that's a lot of what my R and D phase looks like. It's a lot of listening. And then, then I, I allow myself to go into a sandbox. So, um, for in the, in the case of, um, Wolfenstein, for example, um, a lot of this was based, the first initial reference that the client really wanted me to focus on was the Cocteau Twins Gracelands album. I'm like, wow, first of all, I never heard of the Cocteau Twins. I, I never heard of that either. <laughs> so, uh, but it was really cool and it felt like psychedelic punk music. Wow. It was like really bendy. It, it really was like someone was on a trip. It was like, you know, it was like, do no, no. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, okay, so it's like these bendy, reverby guitars. It's all very, like, solid state, but sounding, but very, like, gritty and old and dirty and noisy and mm. trippy. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, so I got Wolfenstein, so I got that, and I got, you know, I got that dark, brooding, tough, bigger than life, don't take itself seriously vibe, and then I have this vibe, and I'm like, okay, so how do I combine those together? So right. then I start, because I'm not a guitarist, I start coming up with, but I'm very technologically, you know, into all this stuff, so I got, you know, guitar samples and things like that, and I use a plugin called Helix Native which was my latest toy and distortions and stuff like that. And it did, I, I did a talk on this too. Um, and I started coming up and dialing tones and listening, you know, because going back to when I was on tour with Bobby Brown, my job was to listen to the albums, all of his right, albums right. and pro program every sound that every keyboard player would be playing from scratch. Wow. So you got a lot of sound design practice. Right, exactly. And a lot of listening practice and a lot yeah. of A, B in comparison. Does that sound like it? No. Does this sound like it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Oh, no, no. There's a lot of nuance in, and it goes into mm -hmm. it. It's just like a painter. It's like anything creative. You're looking at a painting. Okay, what's the shade of blue? What? How is he doing that with the light? How is that? You know, there's a lot of stuff when you really go deep into it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do with music. And that's what actors do. So that's really what it is. I mean, I dialed in and I started coming up with this unique sound for, for Wolven. Uh, Womanstein that uh, and I started bringing in other 80s things that were dark like you know whether it's be um, you know from Blade Runner Evangelist and things like that I started putting it through big rusty 
sounding cool reverbs and spring reverbs, BX20, Lexicon 480s. I got a Prophet synth. I started like, ooh, this is bendy, you know? Like I started playing around and I started coming up with this huge palette of like awesomeness that would sound <laughs> like the game. Right. And I had to figure out how to deal with drums and how to deal with drum machines and how to deal with this and how do I deal with a fight scene and how do I deal, you know? So it's like all that experimentation, that's all part of the R&D phase before I even start making cues that go in the game. So did you find yourself, to your point, did you, did you find yourself creating kind of this repertoire or maybe a better word would be a reservoir of sounds before you even started actually constructing melodies and harmonies and stuff like that. It was like, let me get the sounds first. Was that kind of your approach? That's always my intention. But what's really funny about that is it's reverse psychology with my own creative process. It tricks me into creating, even though I'm not, because right. sometimes I like something so much that I just start vibing on it and I hit record. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And that's the trick because when that's how you tap into that kindergarten like uh, creative process because you're not worried about your deadlines. You're not worried about how much you're getting paid. You're not worrying mm -hmm. about like all the stuff that creative professionals have to deal with. So if I say, look, I'm not giving myself any pressure today. I'm just going to create. I'm going to have fun in the sandbox. And sure enough, by the time I come out of the sandbox, I have 20 ideas with all these sounds that I was exploring that I can, you know, sometimes there's melodies. I did this. I do this with everything. I did it with Halo. I did it with, you know, all the original scores, of course. Um, everything I do, that's that's my process now. 